September morning as we celebrate the continual partnership between the United Christian Leadership Ministry and the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. We'll hear today from uh, the Reverend Louis Stewart and the Monroe County Sheriff's Top Baxter, and I'd like to begin by introducing Reverend Louis Stewart. Thank you. Let me say good morning to everyone. For over a year, representatives of the United Christian Leadership Ministry and the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, Todd Baxter, and deputies have worked to hammer out an improved community police relationship to realize transparency and accountability based upon the New York State Governor's Executive Order 203. If we are to overcome racial injustice, intransigence, and realize that we share a common goal of establishing justice, realizing equality, and bridging of the gap to eradicate systemic racism, then we must have an open and honest communication relative to transforming policies and procedures. To this end, Todd Baxter and myself and uh, the deputies and UCL representatives have developed and signed a memorandum of understanding to foster an open and transparent exchange of information regarding law enforcement procedures and practices, including those related to the Monroe County Sheriff's Body Road Camera Program. The joint collaboration is to advance systemic transformation, mutual respect, and a disclosure of those issues, policies, and practices which we can work to change. Protest encourages and arouses the need to eliminate justice, but sustained change is brought about by consistent dialogue, persistent raising of the issues, recognizing each other's humanity and giving each other respect and elevating certain principles of freedom and equity. We desire to promote police as servant protectors of a community who will protect and uphold the constitutional rights of all, regardless of religion, race, ethnicity, and gender. We have just too much violence going on in our community. Too many people dying, too much gun violence. And many times we overemphasize situations where the police don't emphasize enough what needs to be done in our community. And that is the eradication of violence and dealing with those offenders who care nothing about human life. So I want to say I applaud Sheriff Baxter and his staff, his deputies, and the members of UCLN for their determination to build this great relationship and to build community together. This is the first step. Thank you. So this is really the uh, formalizing of a relationship that actually started, uh, Reverend Wayne and I recall this, four years ago when I was campaigning and knocked on his door. <laughs> and, uh, we, had, we had dialogue then, frank open conversations then. And that's the relationship that we have, uh, the ability to talk, the ability to talk typical conversations, the ability to disagree sometimes. Uh, but that's the transformation we're looking for, that it's not us versus them. We are one community. Uh, and law enforcement, UCLM, and all these other great agencies have a part to play in the community. And we are one community. We look forward to a, this continued effort to open ourselves up to each other and have proactive conversations. Part of this agreement is we meet quarterly. We have proactive conversations, not reacting when something negative occurs in our community, but we talk and we communicate on a normal basis. We also look to seek first to understand, then to be understood. Mm -hmm. That's a very important part, but sometimes we dig into our positions and we don't want to talk to other people that might have a counter idea or even a question that might be difficult. This is all about being proactive and also seeking to understand the other point of view. Then, most importantly, to synergize our efforts. The Reverend hit on it. The community needs help. Community is having a violence problem we've never seen before. Uh, and we all have a part to play in that violence. It, this, the scourge on our community right now is incredible. 
uh, the number of shootings, the number of victims, the number of families being destroyed. And just one simple example how this relationship can improve that is the Reverend has information, his constituents have information, they have needs, they have desires that from law enforcement. And same thing with us. We have needs and desires. We need to be deeper into the community so we can prevent the next shooting. Uh, and that comes with a relationship. So the synergy of the efforts is, is really important to me also, that, that we are working as one team, one community. Sometimes at different points of view. That's perfectly fine. That's the American way. Uh, but the fact is that we've had a relationship for many, many years, and this is just formalizing that relationship, that we can uh, be more proactive in our response. So I uh, applaud UCL on for willing to sit down, willing to hammer out agreements, willing to talk to us. And then we've seen it recently where you know, the Reverend and I have sat down because there was questions. And, so those questions, but also there's things that we need, and we're willing to say, hey, can you help us out with this? That's what it's all about. It's really taking care of the community that we represent, that we represent. So thanks. Well, I'll get an update on questions you may have of the Reverend or the Sheriff. What are some of the things that you have questions about, or I think you have questions about, that makes it important to meet and have a dialogue? Oh, uh, it's, it's certainly questions, and and we have not uh, had uh, that type of uh, situations or incidents with the sheriff as we've had with other police agencies. Uh, we had uh, several years ago formalized a, a, a similar relationship with with RPD. And, uh, and so Todd and I felt that it was about time we did the same thing uh, together. But no, the, 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 the issues are uh, uh, in the county, you know, you got a lot of black and brown people who live in the county. And the fact is, they go through things too. But I have not heard anything egregious about the Sheriff's Department at all. You know, so we formalize a relationship uh, to uh, come together, to dialogue, uh, to to build uh, and bridge the gap in our communities and uh, to uh, be there in, take, in case of uh, crises when they arise and to be able to handle together those crises. And if you allow me to just play off the, uh, the reference comments, the nature of our business, uh, we go to a lot of negative calls, we go to a lot of difficult situations and we're making decisions sometimes at a moment's notice. And with that, there's an expectation of transparency. There's an expectation of, can you explain what occurred there? And that's the idea here. Can they seek first to understand, then to be understood? That's the beautiful part of this, is to picking up the phone call and saying, I, I heard, I saw something, and we need that information. We need to have the sensing session of the community. What are they feeling? What are the information that they need? Uh, because it's, again, it, we got to end with the us versus them whole mentality. We've been doing that for decades and decades. Uh, and it's really not that we are the community. We are the community, and many other great organizations are the community. The nonprofits are the community, right? The hospitals are the community, the school districts. And, and the, the less we stop pointing fingers at each other, the more we start sitting down the tables, the better our community is going to get. It's really that simple. Well, how often is the sheriff's office called to a dispute with the community? How often does that happen? I, I thought RPD was, you know, the first responders in well, the city. Well, they often are, but as the Reverend said, you know, we, we represent the whole county, in particular, you know, the, the you know, primary police in, in some of the towns. Uh, we're responding to the, the constituents in those towns. Some may be uh, white, some may be black, some may be Hispanic. Uh, you know, again, the Monroe County Jail is another example of, of, of most of the people incarcerated inside of the jail uh, are constituents of the city of Rochester, fortunately or unfortunately. We can talk about why, but the fact is they are housed in the Monroe County Jail, and they're my responsibility when they're in Monroe County Jail. So if a constituent has an issue or something going on inside the jail, they have these formal relationships. The courthouse is under our responsibility, right? Uh, where thousands of people enter that courthouse every week, and most of them are going through terrible times in their life. Most of them are accused of crimes or victims of, uh, of crime. Uh, they're jurors that are representing all of us. Uh, and another example is family court. That, that, you know, family court that's inside that, that courthouse. So our, our deputies are dealing with constituents throughout the whole county 24-7, and it's really that one community. Uh, we don't like to put boundaries around things. We just like to say we represent everybody. And we, can, we touch everybody sooner or later. It doesn't matter where you live. If there are no more questions, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.